So one of my favorite artists uh, that we're going to take a look at is Rachel Royce, and she is doing a piece called Fruit and Insects, uh, one of the, I think, most realistic, detail oriented painting that we're going to take a look at. And uh, it was done in the Holland Baroque era. So Holland, again, being a Protestant country. So you have more of a focus on subtle religious images, not so kind of obvious ones. You've got an emphasis on landscapes and portraits and still lifes. And that's kind of the world that Rachel Royce is creating art in. In fact, she was probably the most popular female artist of the Baroque era, or one of them, and she outsold uh, the artworks of Rembrandt, and I think creates just really beautiful, very intricate and natural looking uh, images of fruits and bugs here in this one, but she's really well known for flowers. So where did she get this attention to detail? So that's where context comes in. Uh, her father was a scientist, in fact, a very well-known scientist, and I think Frederick Reusch, and he was a botanist, so he's studying plants and things, and he's studying anatomy, bugs, insects, uh, and he had collections of these specimens in jars. So imagine growing up, and your dad just has all these great jars full of all these creepy crawlers and cool um, bugs that you, I'm sure, would be fascinated with, and Rachel definitely was. So she grew up with that around her. Her father also sketched his plants and animals, so she was exposed to art, and then also uh, growing up around uh, just a, a focus on the natural world. And during this time period, you're also in an era of science and the kind of focus on the natural world. And one, the microscope uh, allowed one to see great details. So the microscope was developing and getting better in terms of its technology and you could see things close up, you could see the detail. So that is a part of her knowledge and growing understanding of the natural world that she brings to her painting. And then there's also in science a movement to categorize plants and animals, insects and things like that. Uh, and I don't know if you had the opportunity, but when I was growing up, and in, I think, elementary school or middle school, maybe, we would do um, bug collections where we would find bugs around, you know, uh, in the environment around us. We would pin them to boards and label them, label them with their scientific name and write down our observations about what we saw. So it's that kind of attention to detail and wanting to classify and categorize our natural world and the items in it. That's the world of Rachel Royce. And um, she is known for her still lifes. Still lifes, and again, I should have highlighted it, it is a collection of objects. And it could be anything, inanimate objects or living objects, but a lot of times I think um, stereotypically still lifes are bowls of fruit and things, but you could really have still lifes of a number of different things. So um, that is your context. A family, especially a dad who is studying the natural world, the scientific technology like microscopes are developing, the categorizing of plants and insects and bugs and things like that. Uh, all allowing Rachel to develop this interest in and knowledge of the natural world. So here's a close up so you can just see some of the color work, uh, the reflective qualities that oil allows, oil paints allow, uh, the, the great detail of color within the peaches and the, the texture of like the corn versus the grapes, the moss on the ground, the the feathers and the twigs and that of the nest 
and also just allows you to see all the bugs come into focus. There are more there than meets the eye. You know, some of them blend in a little bit with their surroundings. So it gives you an opportunity to see the butterfly or moth in the foreground with the lizard, the, the flies that start to be seen on the fruits, on the eggs in the nest, the bugs in the leaves on the left. There's a bug on the squash in the upper right hand, you know, by the wheat and above the corn. They're kind of everywhere, hidden in amongst the plants, the fruit that you see uh, with this dark black you know, background that she's well known for too. The fruit and nut just stands out and uh, the naturalism of it is really unrivaled in uh, the world of art. So content, again, the realism, her attention to detail. Uh, you know, she's a painter since her teens, painting until her 80s. So she's got a good 60 years of painting and developing her skill. Uh, this is a still life showing fruits and vegetables of the autumn, you know, season. And um, you have this interplay and interaction of insects, this life death struggle, predator versus prey. Uh, and so that kind of leads us to a couple things. One, the vocab term vanitas. And that is art whose subject is about the certainty of death. The, I know, a cheery subject. But, you know, think about fruit, if left, will rot over time. Uh, the animals there, especially the butterfly and lizard and the prominent, almost lower central focus, like one is the predator, one could be the prey. Um, flies tend to be seen on things that are decaying. So you've got this subtle reminder of things decaying over time, like people. <laughs> um, that is the message in a Vanitas art piece, that you can't outrun death. There is a certainty to it. So focus attention on the things that are you know, um, important. And so another thing in this image and in the Protestant kind of subtle way is you have Christian symbolism. In the back right hand corner, you have a stalk of wheat that's going to be a reference to bread. The grapes then are a subtle symbol of wine. So the blood and the body of Christ. So in this still life, which just looks like this nice, you know, kind of simple uh, painting about fruit and bugs ultimately becomes an image that is a reminder of Christianity, a reminder of the sacrifice of Christ. And when you die, which is a certainty, so it's a vanitas still life, when you die, that hopefully your life has been led in a good way. But ultimately, Protestants believe you are given the grace of God and you will be welcomed into heaven. So that's that's a lot uh, that you might not think and expect of when looking at this image. One last thing then just visually besides the realism is color. And again, the color work is going to be very vivid and uh, that with oil paint, which is she is using, but also just red and green that you're seeing throughout the squash, the grapes. Um, red and green are what are called complementary colors, and they are opposite each other on the color wheel. And when you have complementary colors, like red and green are complements, um, orange and blue are complements, but we're seeing the red and green here, and they look the best next to each other. They bring out the best qualities in each other. They look the most vivid next to each other. And so that is uh, another kind of quality that makes this painting look so alive and bright and beautiful. And, you know, you just can't stop looking at it. Here are some other images, again, showing you the more, um, you know, the focus on flowers that she also does. And in fact, which she is most known for, I love the one in the lower right. That's one of my favorite Rachel Royce images. It's just so lovely. And I like the way the flowers kind of 
spill out off of the table and into the viewer's space. Incredible realism, just incredible. Um, so what I would say about her in terms of formal qualities and function, uh, function, you've got a still life. But also don't forget, you know, function here is religious, but in a very subtle Protestant way. Uh, and I would say formal qualities, and if function is religion and still life, um, I would say our formal qualities, one could be color, with the complementary colors looking very bright and vivid next to each other. Um, and I would say then the um, textures are very naturalistic. You know, that attention to detail and the texture of the moss versus the texture of the grapes and versus that of the nest, all very unique, all very natural. So those are the two or the thing I would use for formal qualities. So again, that is Rachel Roish, a artist in the Holland Baroque era. So it's a Protestant time era known for her naturalism in her still lifes of fruits and insects.